today we are going to discuss on the mental health during this pandemic asking you how are you is really a critical question to answer nowadays as people are passing real hard time yes some are passing time on facebook by playing game with numbers some are doing different challenges and so on but the questions are first how long second are they actually helping you well to get the answers of this million dollar questions today we have ms raunok afroz she is the lecturer of school of business at east delta university she has completed her graduation and post graduation from wirwi in psychology and human resource management and she is the right person to help us to get the answers of these questions about what to do well uh seeing the data of domestic violence in europe and america to be honest i myself am afraid of this <laughs> what is going on throughout the world i mean uh, probably you have heard about the uh, uh, domestic violence rate it has been increased by 30% in europe and america because uh, people are getting afraid of themselves they are, they don't know what are they doing so we we don't know what to do in such a situation probably for many of us this is the first time in life we are facing such a a uh, crucial situation and hence we need to know what to do how to do how to keep ourselves calm how to make a, keep ourselves active in productive works and for this uh, ms ronoka froz is the right person to speak about so uh, let's let's hear from ms ronoka froz ronok it's over to you please thank you sir okay so um, am i audible and visible i just want to check Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yes, ma'am. Okay, great. Um, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, good evening. I hope everyone is um, safe and healthy and at home. So, um, thank you, Rokib sir, for such a um, generous and a kind introduction. Um, um, so, today, uh, without any further delay, let's begin with today's webinar. And um, let me share my screen so that you can. Um, have a look at while i talk you can also see the powerpoint presentation that i have prepared right so um today's topic is um on mental health during the covid-19 pandemic um so mental health is actually a very difficult to difficult topic to talk about um mainly um people do not give so much priority to it and and people do not even give enough weightage if you compare to our physical health right but understanding the concepts of mental health will help us um our friends our colleagues our family our loved ones it will make us stronger and it will develop with um it will develop um uh, we, we will be able to develop the necessary capacities to fight this covid-19 pandemic so what we are experiencing right, right now is a change and change um we we know this a change is um <coughs> a change is inevitable so um tell me something like um 3 months ago did we even think that everything is going to go virtual we would not be able to step out of the house or um we won't see our friends and our colleagues for so long but this is something that we have uh, come to we have to the faster we accept it the faster we adjust to it um the better we can uh, deal with it and we will feel less stress and um anxious about it okay so moving on in times of rapid change and uncertainty um so when there is such a big change for us right um feelings of anxiety and anxiousness are genuine they are um they it's genuine and we know there is a real threat as in there is threat to our life right we might if we get covid we we will recover or there's also a slight chance that we may not so there's a real threat to our life so during this time we feel very anxious and we are worried so there will be two types of scenarios that we can see ourselves in one is a worry chain which is a worst case scenario and one is a good 
scenario, which is the best case scenario. So before I actually discuss, I will go through both the chains. But before I discuss that, let's go into uh, what does worry feel like? So when we are worried or when we are anxious, we have lots of thoughts chasing in our brains, right? We are rapidly uh, progressing in increasing catastrophic directions. Like everything is going to be out of control. Things will go wrong. And um, we just do not feel it in our head, but we also feel it in our body, right? We have body ache. We have tension. We are not able to sleep. We are not able to eat. Uh, we feel lethargic. And it's a memory to a big extent. So what can trigger these feelings? Actually, to be honest, anything can trigger feelings of anxiousness and worry. And researchers um, in the field of psychology, they have identified three situations where the feelings of anxiousness and worry becomes more prominent. The three among them are, which have been identified are, Ambiguity, when we do not know, uh, but when there are actually multiple interpretations, we do not know exact thing, right? Or when something is novel or something is new. Dharmani, we've not had enough um, experience on it, so we don't know how to deal with it. And lastly, yeah. if unpredictable, uh, when it's uncertain or unclear how things will come out in the end. So if that sounds familiar to you, the three things combined, Yes, it seems a lot like the COVID-19 pandemic. So moving on, let's see the worst case scenario, the worry chain. So I've actually drawn a chain, uh, which is, it's a spiraling effect. Okay, so for instance, you have a headache. How does the worry chain work like? Um, you could also have a sore throat or I'll take an example of a headache. You could also consider, replace it with... So if you get very anxious and you think, uh, okay, what if I have coronavirus? Then you might think, what if I passed it on to people at work? Or what if I passed it on to the grocery store I went to? Then um, you might think that everyone will die. Ultimately, you will lose all of your friends and family and it will come to an end, right? So in this, it will spiral up, spiral up, spiral up, and you will panic. So this is not where instead we people, uh, human beings, we believe in our own thoughts, right? But it's important to understand, to take a step back and think that thoughts are actually just thoughts because they, um, they are in our brain. People do not have access to them. And just because you think about them, it doesn't mean it is true or accurate, right? So just because you think like this, it does not mean, or you have a feeling that this can happen, does not mean this is going to happen. There is no 100% accuracy. And moreover, people, as in, apart from you, anybody else uh, does not have access to your mental um, or cognitive process, basically your thought process. Um, so the way we describe things with words, the way we tell our stories, it describes us. Our stories make up our personality, right? So if you're constantly talking about negative things and describing things um, with a lot of anxiousness and worry, people will observe you that way. Similarly, there is a law of attraction that works, right? So for instance, you think like... Um, you're only thinking negative. You're watching a lot of negative news. News actually have a lot of scary things if you keep watching it because um, BBC, CNN or whatever, you know, they will show the highlights. They will show um, the headlines and the headlines are basically about positive cases um, and death toll. So how much negativity you absorb and how much negativity you get into the spiraling effect, that is just you are attracting all that. So you are basically shaping yourself where negative things will happen and you work towards it. So negative things will happen to you. It's law of attraction. So let's understand that if we think ahead and think about being practical and think about being positive. So the same case, let's consider it. If you have a headache or you have a cough, then you think, um, what if it's coronavirus? Um, 
there are two chain of thoughts that we can um, in we can go towards right one is maybe i should self isolate and if the symptoms persist um, then i will seek for professional help and get tested a uh, covid test or maybe it's just a headache or maybe it's a cough i can just take some cough syrup then second stage if i self isolate and wait for the results that is your next thing to do or you can think of maybe it's just a headache and it will go away if i take um paracetamol and in the end even with you being practical you can go till the end right uh, if the test is positive then doctors doctors will help to come up with up with a and if it's negative then i'll continue to take care that means i'll keep taking precautions or you can keep um assuming that it could be just a headache or just a cough and um you know um a medicine could just treat it so this is basically i'm not suggesting that we should be always optimistic optimistic and ignore everything but these are the two uh good approaches that we should be heading towards a uh, best case scenario right and uh, the first the top one is more practical and the second one is more, more optimistic but we should be following this path to maintain our sanity and not going through the worry change because worry chain um all right so um i just want to um make sure that so far um you're all with us right so can anyone um just um say if it's all fine if um everything is going okay Yeah, going fine. Please oh, carry on. Okay, great. So um, now let's understand our emotional reaction. So what happens is um, it is a frightening situation, just not for you and me, but globally for everyone. So many of us are actually watching the news, and every time we watch the news, we wonder what will we hear next. Um, you know, like people. Some people may think of. the vaccine coming out or medicine or whatever so the feeling of continuous anxiety uh, uncertainty can spiral up into a lot of panic you need to understand two differences actually in layman language we um call anxiousness anxiety we use these two words interchangeably but anxiousness is a feeling that comes and goes right it's more situation dependent but anxiety is actually um a pervasive feeling it's a proper disorder it's a psych it's a psychological disorder that people suffer from so you need to be slightly careful what you have okay do not if you're feeling anxious it does not mean you suffer from anxiety disorder right so um i feel like psychology makes more sense to people who do not follow psychology if we related with biology or we related to science so yes psychology is also a science um let me explain it to you how when worry and anxiousness comes into play how it affects our physical health right so um you know that we have a central nervous system and something like an autonomic nervous system so the autonomic nervous system controls some bodily processes like blood yeah. circulation digestion breathing urination heartbeat uh these are some of the uh, processes right and there are two types of autonomic nervous system that's there one is a sympathetic autonomic nervous system and one is a parasympathetic and as the word goes autonomic it means basically automatic so it is something that regulates without the human conscious effort behind it okay between uh, that individual does not have um, any conscious effort that something is happening anyway so all the autonomic nervous system the basic functions such as our rest when the body is at rest the body is digesting the body is feeding and breathing all that is controlled by the parasympathetic autonomic nervous system which is fine and that's how our body should always operate but when there is um worry or when there is extreme panic or anxiousness the parasympathetic autonomous nervous system gets activated so it stimulates the body's fight and flight we want to fight it out or we want to run away we don't know what to do so things like when we worry too much what will you feel heartbeat racing um you'll sweat 
uh, there'll be problem with your respiration and your pupils of your eyes will dilate, right? So what we have to do is not worry too much or not lose control or not be anxious uh, about things because when our sympathetic autonomous nervous system gets activated uh, again and again, um, and we're not able to control it, gets overactivated, then we can lose control. We can be victims of heart attack. Um, uh, you know, complete, like, it can be anything. It can be any organ failure, heart attack, or it can be something uh, really bad. So that's why please understand how psychology and biology, our physical and mental health, they both are interrelated and they both are equally important. I cannot emphasize which one is more important over one another. Right, so um, coming to being informed. Great if you guys are informed about a lot of things, you're watching news, but do not obsess over it, right? So uh, stick to trusted sources like World Health Organization, Daily Star, CNN, BBC, some trusted newspaper you must stick to because there is a lot of nonsense on a lot of uh, medium. Like for instance, Facebook has a lot of false news, right? I'll give you an example. You all know the Russian president, Vladimir Putin. So in one of his hearing, he said um, that if the Russians do not isolate, if they do not maintain quarantine, then he's going to let out all the wild animals. And Facebook being the genius, people on Facebook, what they circulated after a uh, few days, that they uh, they showed pictures of lion nicely roaming around on the streets of Russia. So, and people get scared with these news, right? Um, okay, I'll give you one more thing, which is um, even more um, unreal, but a lot of people actually bought it and a lot of people started doing it at home. Guess what? It's basically the test, that um, self-test for COVID, okay? Like if you can hold your breath for 10 seconds, that means you do not suffer from any fibrosis, which is related to your pulmonary fibrosis, the lung issue, right? And if you do not have fibrosis, that means you're free from COVID-19. This is complete nonsense because um, this test, first of all, this breath test is not related to fibrosis and fibrosis has no connection with COVID-19. So um, if, you, uh, if you have fibrosis, you can, you can get it, you can get COVID-19 or you may not get it, right? So please um, do not fall for all information. And try to limit your news, news intake because what we have to see, we can see it in just 20 to 30 minutes. So maybe you limit your time 20 minutes or 30 minutes in the morning or 20 minutes or 30 minutes in the evening. But do not over obsess with news. And even if it's from a reliable source, if it's giving you anxiety, like these days, you know, with the increasing number of positive cases in Bangladesh, we used to have like 10, 20, but now we have four hundred a day right so it is scary even if it's from a trusted source step away you can turn it off you can uh, concentrate on something else stay away from it then another thing is be careful that with the information you share and with whom you're sharing so you know we live with parents and grandparents and they tend to get very scared because you know as it was said like for instance italy uh, having the highest um, older, uh, you know, um, citizens, senior citizens. So the death toll was high. So, you know, this information, when it reached to our parents and our grandparents, at least my parents, I can give you an example. They both are 60 above. They, they were very anxious. They were very anxious for two days. You know, I could see that. Um, as long as they are taking precautions, as long as they are quarantined, this should work. So be mindful what information you share with your family and with your friends and especially with grandparents and parents. Right. So I have something for you to actually um, identify things that we should focus on and we should not focus on. Um, so there are two circles that you can see. OK, so the mint or the lime green one, which is inside, it's it includes all those things which are in your control and you should focus on. And the outer circle, the bigger circle, includes all those things 
that's not in your control so you should not stress or worry or be anxious about them because you cannot do anything about them so let's see a few of them for instance when will the vaccine come out how do we know we're not scientists even the scientists still don't, don't know right so why should we worry about it or when will the medication will come out or when will things become back to normal we don't know a lot of students have asked me ma'am when will the lockdown end when will university open um i'm sorry students i do not have answer for this and i'm sure even the management does not have answer for this even vice chairman sir does not have answer for this because it's all very uncertain right um government is not supporting enough a lot of people uh, are saying that so what do we do about it uh, lack of testing kits that's why we're not getting in uh, the exact number of covid patients so what do we do we the amount of tests we have we are using those right so these are some uncertainties which we have to ignore and if you are able to ignore these you will see 60% or more i would say 70% of your covid related anxiousness and worry will go off by itself okay let's get into the things we can control in our control limit travel um i see a lot of people under the name of um, grocery shopping they go out of the house every day come on we are now in the fourth week i believe of lockdown so by now we should know that what is our food consumption every week so let's please limit it and go every week and be more organized and instead of going every week you increase the risk of the spread social distance obviously you are you have to it's basically this is it's not an individual responsibility that you have to stay quarantine um if you get it your family will get it if your family gets it the community where you live in will get it so it's highly contagious you have to you have a responsibility which is for the community so it's time for us to be less selfish right think about the community as well what you can do is wash hands disinfect regularly um limit news consumption that we said okay few things that we think are very important and our family must know about it we can create awareness and <clears throat> lastly uh we can we should show kindness and compassion towards others so this is a great time for us to bond with people right so uh for instance um the the apartment beside us okay my in-laws live there so sometimes we go there for lunch because it's just attached to the house and um so when we go out and enter that building we see there are dogs who are you know just lying on the por porch and they are starving so what i've started doing is some of the less leftovers have come uh, of the food i've i've been going and giving it to them so this is basically that makes me feel happy every time you do things that makes you happy and you feel like you've involved in kindness and compassion it actually decreases your mental you know stress and it gets you in a good mood okay so moving on um like i said be aware of dr google you endlessly searching on the internet to unanswerable questions will result in you feeling more anxious so you have some symptom maybe you have uh, a runny nose or you have a cough okay you should be careful but if you start searching it will give something scary on google right google it will say covid or it will say anything it can say cancer also so you need to be careful on your searches or what are you doing do not do things that get you more stressed out all right so even though we are taking very good precautions um to not being panicked or not worrying or not losing control but we can still being uh, we can still be victims of uh, such situations right so for that what do we do if we are caught up in a situation where we are panicking what do we do please come back to the diagram to the circles that i had taken you across again if you are focusing on the things that you can control and you ignore the things you can't um you lose uh, you uh, win your battle okay you you basically um reduce your stress to a great extent wash your hands disin disinfect but please uh when you are making foam and cleaning your hands we get a lot of instructions right like um 
a lot of people have said sing happy birthday twice while washing hands uh because that is equal to uh, 20 seconds but while you're doing all that uh please make sure you close the tap as well because that will lead to another crisis so um when you're out in the public do not touch your face right because the germs are uh um, you, you can get the germs or the virus there so practice social distancing these are the things that you can do going out for groceries wear a mask wear pp ppe but i would say instead of uh, investing in ppe you should the clothes that you wear um outside come back and quickly give all that for a wash right um so that everything gets washed okay coming to shoes shoes have been uh really spreading a lot of germs and viruses so make sure actually a research said that this was this is what happened in italy sadly because people did not people do not keep a separate pair of shoes to wear it at home and to wear outside but i'm sure we do so we should be more careful about it and to in disinfect them then immune system is very important this is the time that all of us would love to been uh you know munch on um junk food but this is not going to help your immune system sorry to say this is this does not have you know all the junk food they do not have any nutrition value so it is not going to help you so instead you should eat healthy get enough sleep sleep is as important as breathing you need to sleep i know some of you you are giving your final assignments on turnitin or black box and however you know i'm talking about edu students and if they're outside students you may be also busy with things but soon when you get free in a week time or something you will binge watch on some tv show netflix or something you'll compromise on your sleep that's really wrong do not do that 8 hours of sleep is important it really refreshes you exercise now some of you who know me you will say that um, i am a health freak that's why i always propagate about exercising uh yes i do to all my students and my colleagues but um exercising what happens with that it it is related to mental and physical health physical health obviously it keeps you healthy keeps you in shape you look good but what it does to mental health is um uh, when you do it in a brief like 20 to 30 minutes um it makes you sweat and there is release of happy hormones or endorphins right and when it releases those you feel very energized you feel very productive automatically it reduces your stress level worry anxiousness to a great extent so exercising now you'll be like okay we can't go out so what you can there's a lot of things on the internet you can you know work out at home or simplest thing you can skip skipping is very good you can if you if there is a way if there is a will there is a way you will manage maintain a set routine please this is not a holiday although sadly in many government uh, circulars it's written public holiday um it is very sad it should have been uh, you know locked down or whatever it is not a holiday for any of for any of us so do not treat at do not treat it as one do not be in your night suit on your pajamas all day this is very bad because once hopefully soon when we get out of this lockdown period you will not you will struggle to come back to a proper routine and if you are if you wake up in the morning you have a good breakfast you freshen up you wear different clothes your mind changes your body your mental health what happens to it is you prepare yourself to be more uh, efficient so it leads to productivity like we say it's law of attraction what you prepare yourself to be you somehow end up there so please be um you don't have to dress up you don't have to look very beautiful very good or handsome you just wear fresh clothes do not be in your pajamas plan a day have a schedule all right so moving on um now when we are doing all this still we are humans and we are social creatures we need constant social contact so this is a wonderful time for people who are extreme introverts but most of us are extrovert we love to be in people's company uh what do we do we'll get depressed we will we are in isolation right so what you can do is you can make good use of the internet there is skype zoom there is uh there are lots of video and audio chats 
right? Where you can schedule chats with friends, family all over the world. That's what people are doing. Uh, you may not have kept in touch with your school friends, some of your school friends. This is a very good time. Get in touch with them. See where they are. They Some of them would be <clears throat> in a different university. Some of them would be um, in a different um, country. So get to know them. Keep in touch with them. You never know. They might come of good use. You might uh, share a lot of information, knowledge with them. Right? Uh, there's something called, I think, house party. Yeah. There you can even play games with um the people that you're video chatting with. Then get creative. Maybe you like to chat with your neighbor. So have a balcony chat if you have one, if it's possible. Or maintaining a good, we say six feet, but even bigger uh, gap and have a chat. You can talk, right? Uh, plan virtual morning tea over, you know, over the internet. Have morning tea or evening tea. Schedule these things, like fun activities. Then make time for things that you enjoy. Like, you know, we are always complaining that we do not, I love cooking, but I never have enough time for it. Or I love reading books or painting, but I don't have enough time. This is the time you have. Make very good use of it. You have so much time in your hand. Do not self-medicate. Now, excess of anything is really bad. People are saying um, vitamin C and vitamin D is very good to keep your keep up with immunity. Now, it doesn't mean you're going to have five, six civets every day, right? Uh know what you're doing um, um, or if there is someone who smokes okay a smoker he might be isolated and he might want to smoke more cigarettes right so that is understand that you that is this is a respiratory uh, disorder COVID is a respiratory problem right a disease so this is something that um, this time we're supposed to keep be healthy keep our lung working so, know what you should be doing and what some things that you can practice relaxation like yoga very effective meditation and lots of things over the internet you know a lot of people uh, uh, do not believe in yoga and meditation because they think it's complete waste of time um, but it is really helpful when you do it for a few weeks. You need to, it, it's a slow, you need to wait to Spotify, if you know about this app. It has some amazing meditation um, um, podcast, it's called. So it's like a 10 minutes or five minutes meditation. You can do it in the morning or you can do for a very good start of the day. Or you can start, you can do it at night, which will give, put you to sleep. And basically all the things that you've done towards the day, you kind of kind of have a self reflection okay what are the things that you could have done better what are the things that you could have you've done well so some um talk about the different things and be positive do not let coronavirus be the topic of all your discussions or all your conversations so you know we have like a dining table conversation with our family always do not make covid the topic stay away from it okay we know what's happening and we know um uh, and we don't know where it's going to lead. So you you try to change your environment. Okay, now let's focus on, um, there are some people who are overachievers or go-getters. So what they will do is, so some people after this lockdown may come up with like two, three research papers, right? Or some people might not do anything or some people uh, might do something or some people uh, might um finish a lot of online courses okay there are a lot of things that edu is also uh, offering us and outside um so as long as you are making an effort that's important if you start comparing yourself with your friends it will demotivate you, you know, right if someone is really good and someone is always you know a go-getter and someone is achieving everything um so as long as you have made your 100% effort, um, you have exhausted your potential. You do not um, compete with anyone else. You are always in competition with yourself only. And as per the social media, you know what people do? They usually, even I myself, usually I will try to portray my best performance and my skills. If I, for instance, um, someone cooks something really good, okay? After a few filters, it will look even prettier. Right, it will look even nicer. So always don't buy what 
they are trying to show on the internet you concentrate on your task and you try to do your best so that you are you know you know you can make yourself happy and your family proud of you all right so uh we are towards the end of the webinar and now the very important concept is maintaining relationship um this is a time where some of us are living alone some of us are living with family and some of us are living with our spouses um when at least i'm not used to living with my spouse 24/7 okay so this is a crisis when we are in closed uh, quarters so but in some situation um people might the relationships might become very difficult right um and difficult relationships might become even worse so when there is um although, although living with 24/7 with uh, 24/7 with someone it gives you opportunities to connect but sometimes it can be too overwhelming so in this thing you create a roster how many you try to identify what are the things that you should do and the other people should do so you distribute responsibilities you try to uh, participate in household things right identify the things that you can do together for instance you enjoy watching shows watching a particular show so watch that but the, you don't enjoy watching a news channel or you know a sport that your partner or your sibling watching so then you move away you do your own activity so understanding what makes you happy or both of you happy doing it together and what makes both of you not so happy doing it together so you pursue your individual task then very important to highlight on not always negative but also incorporate positive things highlight on all the positive things that's happening right like um um the pollution has gone down um you know um a lot of other things are also happening there some people saw dolphins in italy so um you know in the canal so uh, good things can also happen out of this it's basically a time for us to reflect and see right so not always focusing on the negative also seeing the positive and as humans we love talking but the very The, the one thing that we do not really enjoy doing is active listening we do not enjoy listening but imagine if we did listen it would really improve our relationship with our family and with our significant other because the a person may be you know worried and may say something and instead of you listening if you talk about your worries it just not it does not you know end on a happy note or it does not uh resolve anything so try to be active listeners this will improve your relationship with your family and it will build more respect for each other okay so um there is a strategy that has been uh put forward by this very reputed um um psychotherapist and medical doctor called Bruce Harris um and his name face and he's called it face covid but every alphabet has been uh, defined so um this is a practical strategy for managing difficult emotions so you are feeling anxious and you know you're not able to control it focus on again i would say relate to the to that diagram that i've shown you focus on things that you can control and ignore all the things that you cannot control then a is for acknowledge your thoughts and feelings um mainly you um you know um okay let me give you an example um so there is this very famous psychologist called sigmund freud a lot of you would have heard about him so he uh, started this strategy called defense mechanism where he includes some mechanism that you use in the short term to get away with situations that can, that gives you an anxiousness and worry and but if you use those mechanisms in the long run then you do not end up living in reality because you keep and that mechanism is called denial so if you keep denying things um after if you do it all the time then you won't live in reality but if you do it once or twice it's fine it it helps you to get away with you know feeling anxious so sometimes it's good is what i'm trying to say it's acknowledge your thoughts and feelings what is giving you anxiousness right try to resolve it maybe talk to someone 
then c is come back to your body come come back to your physical body that is so suddenly i'm panicking right and i'm i feel like i don't know if you have um experienced anxiety any of you you feel like you're losing control and there is no way you can um control it that is the feeling right you're losing your mind you're losing control over yourself so what you can do there is an effective um just body gesture that you can do um which has been shown if uh, effective by psychotherapist is you uh like this you tend to press your fingertips very hard against each other so it kinds of the energy comes center here and it helps to get better control of yourself and you stamp your feet so you feel the gravity under it and you you'll feel like okay i'm back to my body and those are just thoughts and thoughts are just in our head there is no guarantee that they are true or they are 100% accurate engage in what you're doing um so these two are re- related engage in what you're doing and see is committed action if you are now anxiousness only happens when you're not 100% committed into your task when you are basically um your mind is diverted your attention is diverted uh that's when you know there is a scope for you to think about something else so what is in, you have to identify what is important for you and how effectively you can spend time uh when you do something try to do it with you know try to be committed try to be passionate about it that's how you don't let other feelings engage in it um or opening up sometimes opening up to a friend we always have you know a friend or a sibling a parent or someone significant that we can open up to and if you are really anxious and you do not have open you do not have an op- option to open up to anyone then you can always speak to a counselor there is never a harm you know and uh, so you need to speak to someone who you know will listen to you actively and will not judge you v is for values so these values are very unique to us harmony they are either taught to us or we've derived it through the parenting we've gone through school or education through our mentors through our seniors through our teachers and however we've developed it they are unique to us and they drive our actions so if you feel like during this crisis what is going to make you is happy is maybe it's also close to ramadan so what you can do is maybe do some charity for the needy you try to do a part of his zakat so these are your values if these things can make you happy if these things can help you to keep your stress level low then engage in these things i identify resources the money you offer help to people and at the same time know which people to take help from and at the same time which sources to like i told you fake sources fake information and authentic information which sources and which guidance should you go for and lastly disinfect and distance that is the only way to flatten the curve so as far as i know little bit of economics um from i think grade uh, 10 o levels so if the if the curve is like this it's a constant if it's like this i think increasing increasing order and if it's like this which is increasing in decreasing order so with our efforts of quarantine and disinfect and distance uh we are it will increase it's a very contagious disease so we have to try our best to increase at a decreasing order right all right lastly the achievement through this current pandemic is first we have to reduce our emotional stress and protect individuals from additional stress we are stressed because um a lot of things are going wrong in terms of economy mental health everything uncertainty so we really do not need extra stress so uh, so um move yourself away from extra stress second is to assist individuals in organizing and mobilizing resources or support system to meet you need out organize things so that you're able to uh, deal with everything better i feel like um all of us will come out stronger and more positive from this um pandemic you know it's more like a testing period so now um 
think about it um think about the people with extreme down syndrome and extreme autism um you know we are social creatures we love to go out but think about those people they mainly are not taken outside even they would love to make make friends and talk to people right but they are not really taken outside because they are not able to deal with this do deal with changing situations and at the same time their families are scared to take them outside because they are scared of social stigma and they are scared of label their kids or their friend uh, their you know whoever the victim would be labeled as you know a challenged person or a special person so i think this is a time to empathize on people so that when we come out of this we have experience kind of experience this their life in being less contact socially and now we should be more supportive towards them we will be able to understand those people well right so few things we've not uh, really um, you know we've taken for granted and we've not been Uh, grateful towards um, so now we need to understand that after this lockdown how socializing and networking how it is a blessing for us right okay now this is the last slide um uh, seeking professional help when it's needed some points okay for instance you are very anxious you're not able to deal with it um and you feel like you really need help there are some things that will that restricts people from actually seeking for help first is counseling is for crazy people absolutely that is not true it's not for crazy people it is for everyone for everyone um everyone will know that i met a counselor or a therapist so what nobody cares and why do you have to tell everyone first of all if you are conscious about it don't tell anyone or and a counselor or a therapist it is their responsibility to keep all this um you know to him or herself they're not going to uh, reveal all this to people third is if i can't deal with my own problems mental health problems then it means i'm weak not at all you are you we all have a lot of hats okay in us we are maybe we are a wife like i'm a wife i'm a daughter in law i'm a lecturer i'm a colleague so we we have different hats on us so we may not be we may be struggling with one role which is completely fine so if you are never considered weak if you can't deal with your problem you can seek for help only someone who experienced what i did will understand my issues not true uh if you have for instance gone through a divorce or lost a parent and that has given you extreme depression or any you know um, mental problem it doesn't mean the counselor or the therapist has to go through the same situation not at all they are equipped in a way they are taught in a way they are experienced in a way to deal with difficult uh, situations so they will help you and lastly people will judge you for seeking for help no that is completely yes. true uh, not true and those people who will judge you it's better to stay away from them right all right thank you so much um, everyone for listening to me and my last words to you is say social uh, say stay socially distant but stay intellectually engaged thank you very much now if i if you have any questions i would uh, love to answer your questions okay there are lots of questions actually which um no sorry there are no questions these are some some just chat well uh, uh, ranok thank you very much for your uh, nice presentation in fact uh, thank you. It, it helped me a lot i believe it helped all the people that are uh, listening to you uh, actually uh, we are passing a real hard time and counseling is very helpful for us right this moment well uh, if i summarize what you have uh, told us i mean uh, what you delivered so far i have a few questions i'll ask you later uh, but if okay. if i'm not wrong let me uh, summarize what you discussed today uh, i like this very uh, much uh, first of all uh, thank you very much for introducing the term dr google well uh, for for students google has a different name uh, for assignment and uh, for uh, such other activities student call it google mama and uh, <laughs> during pandemic you have identified a new name google dr google yes indeed 
people uh, uh, nowadays try to become uh, a doctor without an MBBS even. And Google helped them yeah. a lot to become a, a doctor. So thank you for introducing such an uh, uh, interesting and new term. Well, uh, if, if, I, if I summarize what you discussed today, the first thing is that don't think about the issues on which you don't have any control. Only think about the things you can control. Well, nowadays, uh, it is seen that most of us are very much aware of the things that, uh, and they are asking questions everywhere. How many kids do you have for testing COVID-19? Uh, people are also, ask, also asking how many ICUs, how many ventilators do you have? Uh, as you mentioned, uh, we don't need to go for these things because we cannot control these things. So these things are not uh, for discussion every now and then. Yes. Uh, we, we need to be concentrated, uh, concentrating on these issues, but there are people who will concentrate. So as a young guys, especially to the students, please don't think much, okay? Uh, uh, just think the issues you can control. Uh, then one more important thing, as you mentioned, don't try to be a doctor. We have a lot of doctors nowadays and people are suggesting uh, many other people that do this, do that, don't do this, don't do that. And you know what we are doing by doing so? We are misleading people. In uh, some cases, as you as you told, uh, that some people are taking four, five, six, seven, eight, nine times CVs in a day to keep themselves healthy and to make them immune with vitamin C. Uh, probably this is not the right way to deal with. So don't be a doctor. There are doctors take their help. And nowadays doctors are very kind. They're giving online uh, services as well. Then the most important thing, don't run behind the rumors. People are uh, listening to Facebook, uh, YouTube, and uh, such other media, and they are creating something problematic. This is a problem for the individual level as well as for the macro level, and uh, we, don't, we, we shouldn't uh, spread rumors as well as we, know, we should not believe on those. It, it may harm, uh, uh, harm us in all aspects. So this is one more important thing, as you discussed. Then something very interesting from your side that we should follow our regular routine. Regular routine activities will keep us uh, uh, in a, a different mode that we are doing what we used to do on a regular basis. Not only that, as you mentioned, after the uh, end of this pandemic, uh, people, uh, for some people, it will be very difficult to get on the regular jobs after having uh, some uh, different shared will and routine activities. So it's uh, absolutely a right thing to discuss that we should follow our normal routine and we should uh, think ourselves that we are doing uh, something that we usually do on a regular day. This is very important as you mentioned. And uh, a request for all, please don't make it a picnic. Some people are thinking like it a picnic. They're uh, taking uh, special foods and uh, in some cases they're uh, roaming here and there. This is not the time to do so. This holiday doesn't actually mean holiday. This is something special. And uh, uh, one more important thing, as you mentioned, do some exercise. It will keep us healthy and uh, probably it will hel also help us uh, uh, to come out of monotonous activities. And uh, uh, yes, yes, we should, we should uh, call our uh, earliest friends. It will give us a heavenly feeling if we can meet someone who's, whom we didn't meet for years, it will give a heavenly feeling, I'm sure. Uh, and uh, uh, one more important thing you mentioned, that we should do some charity. We should be kindful to all the people all around. Some people are uh, passing really hard time. They're starving. And this is our turn to help them in all possible way. It is not that you have to do it in an institutional way. You can do it personally. You can help anyone in a different way. Even you can help a rickshaw puller. But if you go out for emergency by paying him taka 20 extra of what he used to get from you for the distance he covered. So help people all around. And nevertheless, keep social distance. These are the things uh, what I understood from your deliberation. And I think each and every item is a matter of concern. We should give proper uh, care and we should be very careful for this. And now uh, I, I would like to request people to ask questions if they have any specific question to you 
Is there anyone having a question? You may write it in the chat box or you may come visible and you can ask question. Is there anyone who wants to ask any question? We should have question because uh, there are a lot of issues nowadays. Is there anyone having a question here? No. Everyone seems to be very mentally happy and stable. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's the doctor order. <laughs> let, let me ask you a question. Uh, uh, as I have mentioned in the earlier part, in the outset, that uh, domestic violence is an important issue throughout the world, especially in USA and Europe. Uh, the researchers have uh, told us that the domestic violence rate has been increased by 30% in the US and Europe. And probably it might happen in Bangladesh as well. Probably recently have uh, heard something happened in Bangladesh as well. Though the reason is probably different, but there was a murder on, uh, 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 with a light chat. So uh, something, uh, something fishy is going on all around the world. Do you have any, uh, being a psychology student, do you have any suggestion in this regard about how people can uh, uh, keep themselves calm and cool and uh, behave socially and of course uh, they need to remain uh, very cool. Do you have any suggestion for that? Right, so everything actually arises um, from something like, um, you know, monotony in normal life. If, it's, if our life is very monotonous and we are not making good use of it, we tend to do things which will excite us. So that could be negative or positive. And a very negative thing is domestic violence, right? And since, again, like I mentioned in the um, um, rela maintaining relationship <laughs> section of the um, PowerPoint, when we are living with a person, we and 24 hours we're living with the same person. So this can be, um, you know, very... Um, very, um, it can get into our nerves if you're constantly seeing a person. So what we tend to do is uh, keep keeping ourselves busy and being engaged. And for the other person, for the victim, it's really important to encourage the partner to be involved in some activity. So only when we keep our mind busy, we do, we do not let any negative or any bad thoughts come into or and penetrate in our mind. So being busy is a great thing. And the second is seeking for help. If, um, if someone becomes a victim, the victim will be able to sense it a few days before, uh, before they actually face something very tragic or traumatic. Maybe before um, a victim is beaten up by the husband or vice versa, the husband is beaten up by the wife, um, they will be able to experience the negative reaction or negative attitude of the husband or the wife a few days before. So when you sense it in the beginning, try to resolve it there and then. Do not let it go to a stage where you cannot come back from it. So never let anything go out of control. When you sense some, something, you put an end to it there and then. And lastly, seeking help is something that every human person has a right to do. If you are not able to cope with something, you can always take help from friends, family, you know, even an outsider. I'm sure someone will definitely come in help or come come to support that person. I think these are the three ways how you can deal with this. Yeah, thank you. Uh, probably you were seeing a question from Mr. Sidhar. He wants to know how can uh, I stay you from overthinking. Probably you discussed a lot about it. Still, uh, do you have any suggestion in a line that how can he stay away from overthinking? So overthinking. Um, again, this is also a, it. Uh, it comes from boredom. It comes from when you have less things in hand. So never let yourself come into the things that come into a situation where you don't have anything to do. So, you know, we are com constantly complaining that, uh, ma'am or sir, we have so much work to do. So that's why we don't have a LinkedIn account or we have so much to st study. Uh, we cannot learn something new online. So this is the time for you to indulge yourself in uh, productive things. So more you involve yourself in productive things and keeping yourself busy, the less likely you will be 
to overthink about anything and another thing is exhausting your potential you may overthink that oh my performance in this test was bad or i could have done better don't let yourself go to a situation where you're going to regret give yourself best and if you really still don't do well then there's always a next time what can you do at least you gave your best akun if you don't have the right resources maybe you you didn't do very well because uh, there was a technical glitch like your computer wasn't working you didn't have internet um, and that's why the mcq test didn't go well or whatever whatever the reason could be that is an external factor so you need to identify again the things that you have control over and the things that you don't have control over and involving yourself all the time in productivity let rest you rest you cannot do anything about so you have to discount but what you have control over you always emphasize on that are you is that okay sadhar i hope i answered your question e- e- yes ma'am thank you okay you are welcome okay okay thank you very much indeed you, uh, we need to keep ourselves busy in different works of course the productive works as you know on this regard let me uh, uh, reinform you that uh, we have partnered with coursera and we open a lot of courses for our students for all the fac- uh, members of is delta family and please grab this opportunity uh, uh, enroll yourself in a few courses and you'll be um, uh, you'll be f- uh, finding it very interesting a lot of courses are there which will uh, meet your interest area so please get yourself enrolled in a few courses over course era you dm your uh, somewhere else there are a lot of uh, other way of doing so anyway if if uh, nan has question i i believe there is no more question from the audience today so we'll have to wrap up this session before that let me uh, tell you about the next uh, things uh, coming and as you know this is a series we have been a series from is delta university and of course free of cost and this is the third one the rex next one tomorrow we will uh, have something uh, very interesting and practical and nowadays a trendy one and this is nothing uh, this is uh, what we call digital marketing and uh, in uh, tomorrow we'll discuss about we have a special guest we'll introduce him tomorrow and he will discuss he will be discussing about the reality and myths of digital marketing and i i believe you will be benefited by hearing this because uh, you have the potential and you can uh, get involved yourself into digital marketing activities and of course you can earn even as a student it will help you to earn something so i hope you will be with us and you will be listening to us tomorrow as well and with this few words i would like to conclude i would like to thank ms ronuka froz for her nice presentation as well as i would like to thank the audience for their patience hearing and nevertheless the east delta university authority for arranging such a uh, nice uh, webinar series and of course the network and placement cell cpdc and all the people behind this thank you very much thank you for watching us see you tomorrow bye 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 thank you thank you Shish.